In this video, we'll provide the solution to question number 12 to practice exam 2 for math 1210. We're asked to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times sine of e over x equals 0. And this is going to be a proof. We're going to have to use a major theorem. We have to identify what that theorem is. Give you a hint on this one. On number 12, you'll be using the squeeze theorem to help you finish this thing. So to use the squeeze theorem, we have to find an appropriate squeeze. That is, we have to find some type of inequality to play around with. So notice if I take sine of theta for any angle whatsoever, it doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, the right-hand side is always going to be bounded above by 1, and the left-hand side is always going to be bounded below by negative 1. If we replace theta instead with specifically e over x, we're going to get that sine of e over x is, for the same reasons as above, bounded above by 1 and bounded below by negative 1. Then if we take this inequality here and times everything by x squared. We're going to get x squared times sine of e over x. This is going to be less than or equal to 1 times x squared, which is x squared, and will be greater than or equal to negative 1 times x squared, which is negative x squared. It's important to note here that uh, since x squared is non-negative, uh, if you times the inequality by x squared, it doesn't change the direction whatsoever. So with those consideration minds, consider the following. If we take the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared, that's equal to 0. Uh, that shows us that the right-hand side here is going to go off towards 0. Likewise, if we take the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared, that's likewise going to equal 0. That's just coming from basic continuity. The limit of x squared, we can just plug in 0. And so maybe we should show a little bit more steps there. We're going to negative 0 squared, which will equal negative 0, which is equal to 0. And likewise, if we'd done that to the first one, we, could, we should have shown a little bit more detail. We're going to get 0 squared, which is equal to 0. So in particular, the right side went to 0, and the left side's also going to go to 0. And so then in conclusion, we can say the following here, that by the squeeze theorem, uh, the squeeze theorem, I'm assuming I can spell the squeeze theorem, by the squeeze theorem, we then conclude that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared sine of e over x is going to equal 0. And so for full credit on a question like this, what are the important ingredients? So first of all, you definitely need to mention that you're using the squeeze theorem because the instructions tell us. Um, second, you need to come up with the inequality. The squeeze theorem requires an inequality. It requires that our function here is sandwiched between two other functions. If you do not provide the inequality, then you can't get full credit on this type of question. Uh, then you have to show that the limits of the left side and the right side are equal to some common value. And so then the squeeze theorem applies in that situation. Since the left, the left side and the right side have a common limit, then that squeezes the inner function to have that same as well. And that's, those are the ingredients to a typical squeeze theorem argument.